Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk with members Jermaine and Faith Hill. And we share, hopefully they're going to share their Land Academy experience with us. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jill's got a ton of questions. Uh, and so do I. We, we spent some time on this because it's a really unique situation with us. We just got done doing a deal with you guys. Yep. We did. Yay. We're excited to yeah. close before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> is the deal closed? I, is that the, did we just get this one funded like on Monday? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. yeah. This was what. So we got paid out, right? Yes. Wow. Yes. Correct. 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 And you guys have a check coming. Did your check arrive? It it did. We um we had a direct deposit. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Did it clear? Good. It cleared. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, with it's with that question, me. with that title company, that's a good question. Do you know, it's so funny. I'll, you want to hear what happened real quick yeah, here? Yeah, so absolutely. It, as far as Jermaine and Faith are concerned, it could not have gone better. It was like perfect textbook, how we all went into it how, what they said we're going to sell it for, how it all played out. Awesome. And at the very end, this title <laughs> company screwed it all up. Um, what did they send it the wrong recording fees and, or yeah, something? Yes, they did. They $40 over. And yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and I was telling Omar, Omar's looking at me and poor guy, he's getting the, the front of it. I'm like, they're a professional title company. What the heck? This is what we pay them for. One more time. So, it did not record the day we had thought it was going to record. It did not. We all didn't get paid out. We had to, and then we had to wait several days for the title yep. agent who was not around. I'm like, are you kidding? Me? Seriously? Well, when's the last time any of us, if ever, have had a deal close where there's just no issues at all? Right. I don't know. Time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Often it's something, it's often not, usually it's like they ask for 18 things that we don't need, but that's, yeah. I'm ready for that one. This one, I wasn't, I'm like, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> it's very rare that you have a deal closed where there's no issues at all right. at closing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's ask a few so questions and we'll uh, intertwine, hopefully, the answers with the deal uh, that you guys just got done. I say you guys, I mean, Jill and you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so give us your backstory. Tell us what, where you're from and, and uh, how you got to this point. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll get to, I'll kick no. it off. Um, so originally born and raised in Orlando, Florida, uh, moved up to Virginia um, when I graduated college in 2011, um, found a position, actually worked for Hershey as a manufacturing engineer. Uh, my background is industrial engineering. So moved up to Virginia and uh, met my wonderful wife here, uh, like three years, two and a half, three years later, uh, we moved up and got married and we moved to Richmond, Virginia. Um, and Faith, she's born and raised in Richmond. In Richmond, Virginia. And um, my background, I actually have a legal background. I was an attorney and I worked for a university um, doing compliance work. And Jermaine and I hit a point where we both realized um, that if we continue to move up in our careers, that we weren't going to have much time for each other. And that was not very attractive being uh, a newlywed. So this is when we started thinking, okay, what are some ways that we can um, potentially continue to increase our income, but not increase our time um, into working for someone else? And then that's when Jermaine and his engineering brain started searching for ways to get into real estate. Yeah. So, it, and it actually, we got into real estate. Actually, uh, we had this grand, uh, grand theme idea to just kind of go into residential buy and hold. That was originally how it started. So we went uh, to, uh, you know, we drove around in the Richmond area trying to buy our first investment property or looking to purchase our first investment property. Um, we went to a bank. The bank then told us um, no, because <laughs> your debt to income ratio at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my credit score was not the greatest at that time. Um, and they said no. And so we tried. I, so I did some research, got back home. We hit a roadblock there. And I said, OK, how can we still get into real estate? Came across residential wholesaling. And so I did that uh, for almost about a year. And we've done about 10 deals before we came across land. 
And so I came across a webinar through another kind of educational um, individual out there in the, in the land investing space. And they talked about how you can also uh, cash flow from land. And that really excited me. And I told my wife, I said, well, we got to go from residential to now let's pivot our entire business model and go into land because this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I think it's going to help us as far as the lifestyle that we're trying to build because you're able to do a lot of the deals, if not, if not most or all the deals virtually. Right. And so I found you guys, found Land Academy and signed up for it. And we got a big pack of CDs that yeah. came in the mail. <laughs> and we sat down in front of the TV and popped those DVDs in and, and just started going through them one by one. Yeah. And so wow. now we're 80 plus transactions later. Wow. You know, we've been doing it almost four years now. And, and here we are. Yay. I should tell uh, the listeners, viewers that we stopped selling we stopped sending DVDs like. <laughs> I know it's great. I still see them laying around the office every once in a while. We have like a packaging. few. One yeah. of them's in a frame. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's now a collector's item. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We've been holding on to ours just in case. Just in know? case. <laughs> that was, that was, that was popping the, the doggy door open right behind you there. <laughs> <laughs> or holding it closed or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So that was our journey in getting into getting into land. So, um, so, so yeah, that's how we got here. Yeah. Do you guys remember your first land deal? That's good. That's a good question, Steve. So the actual first land deal, you know, I talked about when we got in first into residential wholesaling. My first deal on the contract was actually a land deal. Oh. Um, because one of the owners got one of our letters, and it was for a house though, and he said. You know, this is a this is a house that we're not looking to sell, but I do have land that I want to sell. And I'm like, land, what what can I do with land? So um, so I called up. So I, I, I said, OK, well, let me try to see if I can do something with it. And so I put it out there, marketed it, and then I actually found a builder. A builder came out there and he uh, we went out to the property and to this day, I'm still you know, really cool with them, really close with them. I've wholesale quite a few deals uh, with them. T we went out there to the land and he kind of showed me, you know, what to look for, how to value it. And he really taught me a lot. And then he decided to pass on it because of um, the soil issues. So it would have been tough getting the land to perk in that potential in that, in that area. So he passed on it. Um, but that was our first deal that we got on the contract our first deal after that um that we actually wholesaled uh, was a property we got also in that same area sent some letters out um and it was actually i think it was the same mailer mailer to the residential um to the residential owners but anyways they had a land that they wanted to get rid of too as well uh, we put it on the contract i found another builder <laughs> and he was excited about it and um he decided to do it uh so we just pretty much did like a regular you know residential wholesale type of transaction where we assigned the contract to him and there was a five thousand dollar spread on it that was our first actual land transaction great was it easy yep. like it must have you must have sparked something for you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it did yeah i mean we liked land because we didn't we, we we found that we prefer not to deal with people tenants um yep. and with we did have a um, one um, experience in the past that didn't turn out so great mm -hmm. so the idea that we could um, make that profit spread on vacant land and not have to worry about issues from a tenant um that was very very attractive yep. so we you know after that those first couple of deals, we saw the potential of really being able to make a business out of it um, and kind of scale it in a way that would make sense for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, with that, with that deal, you know, we found out how easy it was in comparison to residential um, wholesaling. And at that time, you know, I wasn't working with someone um, that was my boots on the ground, so to speak, when doing residential wholesaling. So we were both my wife and I, we were working full-time jobs and, yeah. Wow. You know, I was going out meeting sellers during my lunch break. 
Wow. <laughs> and oh. some of my lunch breaks, they were, I don't know if I want to admit this here, but they, they were a little long. They were maybe <laughs> an hour and a half, you know, an hour and 25 minutes. <laughs> trying to get a deal on the contract. Yeah. And, and like I said, when I did that residential, um, when I did the land wholesale to the builder, it was so much easier. Um, and then, you know, once I got into educating myself and we actually start sending letters out on, you know, for buying to buy land to sell, you know, we found out that that business model is a lot easier. We can do it virtually. We have Google Maps. We don't necessarily have to go out there and meet the owners. And that was the real critical um, pivotal mo moment and the reason why we decided to, you know, kind of pivot away from residential wholesaling into doing uh, land flipping. So tell us the story on this deal that we just funded and closed on with you guys. I, I don't, I don't know any of the details. Okay. On this, do you? <laughs> Whoever wants to go. I'll let, I'll let Jermaine go. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. So I actually found this deal, uh, Stephen, when last year, so this was a mailer that we did. Um, I would say sometime in August of September of last year, the owner reached out to us and said, Hey, I got your letter. Um, I'm interested in selling. I think my offer was like seven thousand nine hundred dollars, and he said, "You know, can you come up to ten thousand and at the time, we didn't really have we didn't want to allocate that much capital to it because that was around the same time the end of last year we were on the verge of closing on our first self storage facility, oh. and so we needed that access capital um to be able to fund that deal. So I was like, ah, I don't, and then we had all these other land deals that we were doing too. And I said, well, let me hold off on it. But I built up a rapport with them. I said, hey, give me to the end of the year and then I'll touch base with you and see what we can do. I said, give me to the November, December period and I'll touch base and see what we can do. And so November, you know, December came, that's when Land Academy, you guys start promoting partnering yeah. on deals. And as soon as I saw that, I said, man, I said, we got to, we got to reach out. We got to send this deal to Jill and then see if they'll be willing to fund it because that was another way for us to scale our business too, as well. So, um, I knew it was a good deal. I just didn't want to allocate those funds, um, Perfect. to the deal with, you know, that yeah, with, exactly. Yeah. So sent the information over to, uh, Land Academy and I guess it, you know, through Jill's analysis, I guess the deal worked out. You know, I knew that we can probably sell it. If we held on to it, I knew we could probably sell it, you know, within 60 to 90 days, you know, 30 to 35,000. But I said, you know, I think this is a deal that I can sell within 45 days and at least get 25,000. We end up getting 25,5 um, within that 45 day period. Um, but yeah, so that was how um, the deal, um, pretty much the journey of that deal was the guy reached out to us, um, you know, we got it under contract or, you know, and then reached out to you guys to help fund it. It got funded, we sold it. And so it was, it was, it was pretty much, um, yeah, kind of, yeah, picture perfect, you know, type of deal. Yeah, absolutely. And just to touch on the marketing a little bit, as soon as we got that um, deal funded, you know, we moved quickly to post it literally everywhere. Yeah. And for this one, we don't always do this, but for this one, we did. Uh, use an, an agent, a real estate agent in the area who's familiar with land value. Um, and of course, he teased us by saying he already had a potential buyer in mind. So we're like, okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, list with him as well. And actually, we think we did get our value out of the agent because the person who ended up buying the property was someone who did want to physically see the property. So with an agent, with an agent. So um, the agent, our agent met them out there and, you know, showed them the property, had staked the property. And um, so we think that that did help in us being able to sell that property quickly yeah. to and, that buyer. And that, and that, and that was actually a Facebook lead that came in. Wow. Um, okay. The guy reached out to us through Facebook because we do, my wife and her um, marketing transaction department do, we post everywhere. We also post on Facebook and he reached out to us. And it's funny because you never know the buyers who are going to close on yeah. properties. I mean, right. it's, 
the buyers who I think are going to close, they don't close. And then the buyers who end up closing, I'm like, okay, they're just wasting my time. Exactly. But the guy, the guy reached out to us on Facebook and he was like, how much would you take? Uh, would you take this? 20, I think it was like 27000 I said, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. I'll take it. And then he said, okay, well, let me talk to my wife and we're going to go out there and look at the property. Right. Two days later, he says, hey, um, my wife to see it. I said, okay. All right, well, let me set up with my agent. She can meet him out there. She met him out there. I didn't hear from him. And then five days, I think like a week later, the husband reached out to me through Facebook. He just texted me, um, where can I send a check? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, nice. This is what yeah. this is those are the kind of deals that you like. So he said, Where can I send a check? So we got every got the paperwork um uh, ready and sent them the paperwork to get everything signed. And that's how the deal closed. So you guys did every, <clears throat> excuse me, every single thing right because yeah. they had a sense of urgency to close on the deal because they probably believed that you didn't realize what you had. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly yeah. how we want this to always go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the reason that was possible because is because you you bought it for so so cheap. Well, exactly. and they marketed it and did everything right. Yeah. You know, and not just put it in one place. Right. You know, you're out there working all different things, so that's yep. how to do it. Yep. And even our realtor, he he called me just a couple weeks ago, uh, or was it a week and a half ago, and um, about another deal. And he said, man, how did you get that property so cheap? And how did you sell it so fast? <laughs> <laughs> did you tell him the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I told him. I told him what we do. And he, you know, he kind of knows what we do. He, he works with a lot of wholesalers, but um, so I did you know, kind of uh, give some of our trade secrets, but he's probably not going to follow it. But, no. but I did tell him, you know, pretty much how we were able to get the property um, at the price that we were able to get it at. And I did tell him the story. The seller was motivated. The seller moved to Michigan, actually moved back to Michigan um, mm -hmm. because of a job transfer. And so he bought that property at the peak um, back in 2007, 2006-ish. And he decided to just let it go. I think on the tax records, he may have, I think he bought it for like, almost 40,000 back wow. then. So, yep. Yeah. I never heard the yeah. sentence moved back to Michigan before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind I of know, job? Usually moving from, like from Michigan to <laughs> warmer climates. Yeah. That's really wild. Yeah. So you guys have done 80 deals. And so what do you look, what's the next 12 months look like for you? Wow. That's a good question. That's a good question. So the next 12 months, uh, we really have, buckled down into scaling our business for 2019. Um, and we're looking to do more partnerships. Um, and so, Send more yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we will. We will. We actually, um, there's a, a few deals that are com coming our way. Oh, uh, actually that we actually have in the pipeline now, but the next 12 months is really scaling our business um, and doing more partnerships with friends, family and land Academy too, as well. Uh, because the previous 80 transactions, my wife and I, we've been closing on our deals and selling them ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, at, you know, at some point in time, yeah. you do run out of money, you know, because yeah. and it, there's some deals that come in and you just like, you just can't close on them because you don't have the cash flow or the cash to be able to close on them. So mm -hmm. we actually just did our first um, investor deal opportunity campaign this morning. So we had three deals on the contract. I mean, sorry, we actually closed on two. We're about to close on the third one, but we sent out an investment opportunity deal sheet to our friends and family that we've kind of built a relationship over time and told them what we do. And we just got all of them funded just right before the call. That's fantastic. Wow. Yep. That's a, you know, that was, that leads me to my next question. So you're an industrial engineer, like, so your middle name must be try to make things more efficient, right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. but he's I try to do that in my personal life, but it doesn't go that well sometimes. But yes. Well, I appreciate because, you know, there are times when, like, some days Jermaine will notice, like, Faith, you just look extra busy today. And it's because usually I'm not delegating like I should be. And so I appreciate the fact that he can spot inefficiencies, you know, with our, with, with my work at least. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, um. Yeah, that was yeah. recorded, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> With her work, it's easier than being more efficient at my work. So. 
Got it. But yeah, you know, that's 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 definitely what we try to implement in our biz, business to be more efficient. Yep. I gotta ask, what's been your experience working together? <laughs> how, yeah. how many it, days? You know how it is. There's days it's great. There's days you're like, what have I done? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I guess that's I guess that's more me because I, you know, being together almost I'm being together 24 oh, hours yeah. now you yeah. know yeah. so we're, you know, we're, we're always together but um you know we do take time to kind of give each other space every now and then <laughs> um my wife probably gives me more space than i give her <laughs> <laughs> i'm the joker so i like to kind of mess cool. with her and tease her <laughs> a lot so um but we definitely try to give each other uh some space and you know what we've learned too um is how to really designate each other roles that has really helped um right. in the evolution of our business and our partnership together yeah. um and then also too we 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 have a pretty set schedule that we try to stick to so we have certain meetings that we try to stick to every week to make sure that we're hitting on certain things that we need to talk about so we have a finance meeting we have a systems meeting um i think those are two main right. ones um, and then we got our land strategy and stra meeting. yeah land strategy yeah. meeting right. so we have these meetings weekly to make sure that we're on the state same page now i noticed that if we for some reason don't have a meeting you know then we can start to go off the rails you know so we found that it's very important for us to have those weekly touch base meetings to make sure we're on the same page uh definitely that's excellent you guys nailed it it's uh yeah. separate and conquer and then schedule yeah. everything out those yeah. are the two things <laughs> yeah. two major things that's the reason that we've with any of this is possible yeah and you have to trust each other when you you know you let go and you put the other person in charge you have to just walk away know they're going to take care of it you know and not yeah. not get involved and do what you're supposed to do and that's awesome right that is so true stay in your lane that yes. is so true yeah. because you know you, that, that's so true because we actually struggle with that at the beginning um because when the when i when the business first um you know was birthed it was pretty much me that started the business started the residential wholesaling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so faith did not come in until until he called on the first deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I said, that's what hey, she... what do you need help with? You know. <laughs> so I had to close on the first deal before she got on board. And so I was so used to doing everything. Uh -huh. And so when my wife came on board, it was a little tough for me to kind of let go of the reins, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, even though I kind of gave, you know, we agreed on the title that she would take over marketing and transactions. But since I was so used to doing it, was kind of hard for me to let go. Um, but that was a learned experience for us. And we, you know, we had to sit down and really talk about, okay. And I really had to trust her taking the reins over for that department. And when she's taking over the reins, that's when our business really started to grow. Um, and our, our land business really started to grow. That's awesome. Yep. Faith, did you ever have any uh, doubts going into this? I mean, you, you mentioned waiting for that first deal. Did you just really want to see how it would play out or? Yeah, absolutely. I had doubts. Um, when <laughs> I guess I had doubts at two, two distinct points, I guess first when he started residential wholesaling and was yep. sitting at the table with a uh, yellow legal pad and red pins writing, hi, I'm interested in buying your house. And I was like, this doesn't look professional. I don't know what he's doing. You know, I, I don't see this working. And so, I think I we had a conversation. I said, Jermaine, you know, we can give it six months, but if 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 you don't close on a deal, we might want to look at another strategy. Right. And so he did he did beat that six month time frame. <laughs> um, but then I remember the second point I had big doubts was when Jermaine came to me and said, Hey, you know, have you know I discovered land. You know, we can we can flip with land and we can make cash flow from land through by seller finance notes. And I was like, land, you know, I. I was, I guess when I had thought about land, I'd thought of people who basically land bank and I just didn't understand the concept of being able to make quick uh, flips or quick cash mm -hmm. right. off of land. So again, you know, I kind of, Jermaine was really passionate about this. He was, he knew he was sure about it. And, and so I, I just kind of watched and, you know, with him watched the CDs that came in from land Academy. And, and then, and then I, I, I was convinced that it could work. So, <laughs> so. 
Um, <laughs> and here you but are. But yes, definitely there have been doubts, but but certainly I've 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 uh, jumped on board full full throttle now because I've seen that I've seen the results. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And now she pushes me. She pushes me to do bigger, bigger deals in land. So I'm more of the conservative type. Adding a zero, type. <laughs> <laughs> Adding a zero. yeah. Uh -huh. Faith is the. She's more of a risk taker. I'm more conservative. But now she's pushing us, pushing the business to really, you know, grow and to do bigger and and more deals. So That's I mean, awesome. this is almost exactly on a different time frame, but almost exactly the roles and the how, what happened with Joe and I. Uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't that fun? That's, there's a reason why I took over the deal funding and he's doing some of the other things. Yeah. I, uh, I, I just, I get a the rush out of it and I'm not afraid, you know, and I love it. Um, I'm way yeah. more conservative now in the deals that we choose to do and don't do. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're at a point now where it's a slam dunk if we do it. Like I remember approving the deals that, that deal that you sent to us. I personally was still involved in it back then yep. because we were just launched it. Yep. And I remember green lighting that immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great deal. Yeah. It was a great deal for the person who bought it. And it was a great deal for all of us. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah it was. Yeah. There's probably still ten, fifteen thousand dollars of uh of equity in the deal for the person for who him? bought it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. So what's happening? So what's what's new this year i mean if you don't mind sharing what goals you guys have what's 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 coming <sighs> so what's new this year yeah um as i mentioned well, go ahead <laughs> <laughs> well um on the land side i guess one one major goal we had is to try to continue to push ourselves to build up our cash reserves in our business and so we really are trying to do um, do higher volume of deals, cool. um, and that's that's one of the reasons why we we partnered with you all, and definitely looking to do more partnerships because we know that's one way to continue to grow and be able to scale. And just looking ahead, you know, we don't know what the economy is going to be doing, so we want to make sure we're on sure footing. Um, since since Jermaine and I are in this full time, we don't have W two income, so uh, we want to ensure that we have a solid foundation there. Yeah. And then I guess we're on the other half of our business with self-storage. Yeah, self-storage. Uh, so that's going to be a continued um, journey uh, for us. Um, it's going to be self-storage. And so really, we're kind of breaking down um, the three main buckets within our business. It's going to be land flipping, seller financing notes. We're still going to keep a portfolio of seller financing notes. And really, the seller financing notes, we're using that it's pretty much our income yeah. that well, we take from the business. And so then we use the, the land flipping cash and then convert that cash into buying long-term assets that have better tax depreciation. And that's, you know, self-storage. We love the self-storage. We looked at apartments um, too as well to invest in and single family homes, but we really love the self-storage business because it's very similar to when we sell a finance our land we don't get a lot of, we don't get calls about, you know, tenants and their things. So we're going to continue to divert that land flipping cash into long-term investments into self-storage and then continue to build up our note portfolio and then use it at note portfolio to kind of help fund our lifestyle and our expenses. That's awesome. So you guys are in the instant, what I call the institutional phase yeah. of uh, your company. And it's, I think it's step, doesn't matter if it's step three or step four. Mm -hmm. you're, past, you're all past yeah. the fact that you know it works. It's yeah, all yeah. Proven. The, the proof of concepts done. You got pretty much had the systems in place, but probably not the systems that you really want. So you're institutionalizing mm -hmm. the yeah. whole thing. And then there's only one step after that, which is just bring it on home. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and you're, yeah, that's, that sounds about right. You're, you're young enough so that this phase, yeah. if you, I, I would say, take your time because I'm a little bit older than you, I'd say, take your time, take a decade, maybe more, and then bring it on home. You know, really get all the systems in place. And, and uh, you guys are way ahead of everybody, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Some days it feels like day one. <laughs> Man, this business, it is a roller coaster, boy. So yeah, some days it does feel like we're just starting. <laughs> Isn't that funny now? And then things are like, well, I've never had that before. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But that keeps it fun. Yeah. I'm never bored, yeah. right? You're yeah. never bored. <laughs> Jill just, here's an example of stuff that changes all the time. Jill just got off the phone with one of her, uh, a friend yeah. from high school. 
who's just got out of a meeting where they're trying to redesign the MLS. Yep. Like pretty high level stuff. Do you want to? Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Really? What's funny is uh, I, we were just chatting recently back and forth and he's like, he, he said, I just looked up your website and you're not going to believe where I used to work. He was at CoreLogic when they were a startup. Oh, and I can't wow, remember the wow. name, but he was the first project manager of the parent, co- the original company. I can't remember the name of it. It's on his LinkedIn. And then, and then it became CoreLogic. And so he said, I watched it go from, you know, a small little office shared space to this high rise <laughs> building. I'm like, what <laughs> the heck? And now yeah. he's working on all these other big things. And he is working with a company right now on ways to replace the MLS. I'm like, okay, we're going to talk. <laughs> yeah so really good and actually it was him who said he said you know what? i need to do some homework and he's like i may have some questions for you i got this meeting to go to i might hit you up i'm like heck yeah so we'll talk nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah it's really cool but you you know it's you, who who knew look where we all are now and what we're all able to do and what we're working on it's just amazing yeah so, it is it is yeah. it's great now we, there's nothing don't you feel like now too like there's nothing you can't do you figured this out, man. Yeah. You know, that's exactly my point. They're institutionalizing it now. Yeah. Well, it's also, I mean, it, it's easy to have confidence when you see that you all have already paved a, a, a path for how to get there, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, Hey, you know, we can see that Steve and Jill can do it. We can do it too. You know? So, I mean, there really is something, something to that <laughs> to see folks who are further along than you. So it gives you something to shoot for. I know, you know? I know. That's absolutely right. I mean, when you see people, and when you hear people, you guys have the Finance Fridays with Justin Sylvia and then Luke Smith, you know, we've been kind of following him for a few years now on landinvestors.com. And you just see the amazing things that they're doing. It's like you look at each other and Faith and I would look at each other and we're like, yeah, we can do this too. Nice. If they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. So yeah, it does give you that level of confidence to tackle the world almost. <laughs> you guys are putting your own twist on it too. It's, you guys are in a different part of the country. Uh, than most of the people I can tell you for sure. The most of the people in our group are doing it anyway. And you're coming at it from a legal background and from an, you know, actually a really specialized type of engineering background. So I'm sure you're putting your own kind of twist on it, which is great. Yeah, we are. We are. We're, we're definitely utilizing our strengths um, to really, you know, make the business more efficient and put in processes and systems and um, to continue to help grow the business. So that definitely has helped us, I would say, um, in our journey is, is our background, um, to mm-hmm. tell you the truth. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Can I ask one last question? Of course. Yeah. yeah. What, what, uh, parting advice would you give to someone, um, rewind four years, you know, who's thinking about doing this? What would you tell them? Oh, you got one. I got one. You can start it. Okay. Um, one thing that I've noticed, uh, Jill, as you know, when we go to these, you know, RIA meetings and yeah. um, these boot camps, and you know, we meet people out there in the residential space, um, and just in, in in general, just real estate invested in general, or people who are trying to get into the business. One thing that I've noticed is the fear that people have of taking action. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what I've noticed that really separates people um, from really being successful in the business and really taking that step forward is just taking action. Uh, So that will be the advice that I would give. Um, And that's the advice that I do give to people when I'm out there and in those meetings. Hey, you know, don't be afraid. Take action. And the one thing that I like about land business is that you can take the action with very little risk in comparison to other real estate models. You said it. So, um, and that's, you know, one thing that I actually try to push people to say, hey, you know, have you ever tried land investing? You can buy a piece of property from, you know, we bought them as less as $150, you know. So you can get in, buying land, $150 to $2,000. Even if you do everything wrong, you still own the land. And then you're only out 150 to two thousand dollars when you compare that to a residential, you know, type of um, an investment. Uh, the, the 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 risk are a lot greater. Um, so taking action um, is one of the main things that I see that people kind of, um, you know, kind of get themselves in a rut and don't really do, and that hinders them from really um, being successful in the business. So yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And 
the advice that I would give that touches on that a little bit is to, if this is something you really want to do to don't be scared and just focus on the next step. Yeah. You know, I'm one who sometimes I like to try to plan way out and then I start worrying and then, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't take action because I'm, you know, way ahead of myself. But, um, but if you just focus on doing the first thing you need to do, and then once you do that, okay, now move to the next step and then move to the next step. Then you won't get so, at least for me, then I don't get so overwhelmed. And then, you know, when I'm on step 10, I look back and I say, hey, actually, I, I completed a transaction, you know, so, um, so that would be my advice to just focus on one step at a time um, to, to try to limit that fear that you may feel. Yeah, that's perfect. Take an action and focus. Focus on one, become good at it, and then you can move on to the next. What's yours, Joe? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But you know what mine would be? Don't get hung up on uh, that's good. When I, when I talk to people, I, I often have people get hung up on uh, out, extenuating circumstances that they allow them to get in their way, yeah. you know? So it's all motivational for me as well too. Like you, you said, faith, you know, and we're, we're here to lay out the steps. We all know what the steps are, but it's getting from A to B to C to D. And some people spend too much on A and now they're, they didn't make it to B and then they're mad on themselves. So they spend too much on A and they spend more time on A and they, they can't just get out of their own little funk. And then, and then something happens in life and then they're, they've done nothing. So you've got to just, yeah. you know, and that has to come from us. You know, it really has to come from you. I talked to a guy the other day about it and he's, I said something about, you know, having a sit down talk with himself. And he said, yeah, you know what, Jill, that's why, that's why I'm here talking with you right now. He was a member that let life get in the way. And he was very honest in sharing that. And he scheduled a consulting call with me because he was coming back. And he's like, you know what? I am, I have, I sat myself down. I gave myself that talk. I am not going to let myself back, you know, stop. And he just wanted to talk to me for a little less cheerleading. And <laughs> here he comes. Great. What's yours? Great. I mean, mine comes from a much more old man driven, uh, you know, non-positive place. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is it people should suffer? No. Um, no. So, he tells like the kids, he tells the kids that the kids should suffer. <laughs> to learn well, he did a way to learn to pick yourself back up in a good way. I can say this uh, without exception. Everybody that I've met, and we've met a lot of people, including you guys, who, that, who have been involved in this group since we started in 2015, they have all succeeded at whatever they were trying before they got to us. Oh, yeah. You guys obviously went to college, a lot of college. Uh, you obviously <laughs> did what you were doing. So, and if you, you learned for whatever reason that you didn't want to do it the, for the rest of your life, but you didn't say, you know, oh, I suck at this. I want to go try this. Yep. It's the people that don't do well in this are, they're not coming, coming to us already having succeeded at something. They're, they're, looking, they're looking to us to like save, or this program to save the situation. And, and you know, and that's just, I don't see, there's a, that's a sign of other stuff going on. That's true. Yeah. Very yep. true. Oh, how yep. negative is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Oh, hold on a moment. No, you have, a you, no, you're very realistic. And that's why we're, actually we're a good yin and yang. Cause you know yeah. what, the way I, I'm up, I'm, I look at it one way and you look at it another way and it's, and it's all, it's all good. I'm California. You're <laughs> Right. So, I'm a little bit it's country, nothing. you're a little bit rock and roll. Just kidding. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> you got my reference there? Yeah, Donnie and Maria. Yeah. I hope these guys are too young for that. They you know who that is, who that do you? Is. Yes, you know yes. Who oh, gosh. <laughs> no, we know who they are. Okay. I don't know where I got He was that. on Dancing with the Stars, wasn't he, a few years he ago? He won Dancing with the he Stars. Won. Right. And he won over my the person I was rooting for, Maya. Oh, <laughs> and he's he's way older than we are, by the way. I'd like to point yeah, that yes. out as well. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you've cool. done it again. You spent another fifteen, no, probably thirty minutes now, yeah. uh, listening to the Land Academy show. Join us next time for an episode episode called "Start to Finish Land Deal Reviewed." Ooh, and we answer your questions. Post it on our online community, landinvestors.com. It's free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Okay. Jermaine, I remember. Um, go ahead, Joe. Say, this is the after show. Now. Okay. <laughs>
I, Jermaine, I really remember doing a consulting call with you guys. I think maybe both of you, right? Yeah. You did. You did. It was a. Uh, we were in no Richmond because I was um I think I was we at Chick Fil A. Yeah, it was in the car because Faith oh, was, was you was in Charlottesville. Yeah. I was in Richmond. I in the car it, was break. it was on our lunch break. Something else we were doing on our lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like two three years ago, Stephen. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, two three years ago. That's it wasn't so last year. Like that's two three years ago. Did I say anything worthwhile? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. We walked away like feeling it was like we walked away on a high. We were like, we got this. You know, we were we were we were really excited. Yeah, it, yep. it was really really good. It really yeah. Yeah, last week actually, I was just bringing up. I was like, man, I wonder if Jack, uh, Stephen, and Jill still do the uh, consulting calls because mm -hmm. now it's like you've we've gotten past the point. And I'm not saying we're true experts, but we've done quite a few deals, so. Now it's really about, okay, moving on to the next level. How do you really grow the business right. and building a team? And so those are the, some of the things that we're like, okay, I think if they're still doing consulting calls, I think it would be good to kind of reach out to them um, to get some consulting on those things. Those are some of the things that we're finding um, as challenging, the next challenge for us in our business yeah. growth. Well, That's I have awesome. an idea. Let's do a consulting call in this format on that topic. And then you don't oh. have to pay. Ooh. Oh, all right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Okay, so I'll have my team schedule another podcast session, basically. It'll be a, a consulting where we talk about this. That sounds great. Growing your team. I love it. Okay, done. Well, if you guys are awesome. up, are you good? up for it, that'd be, awesome. yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, because I think a lot of people get a lot out of That's that. That's what I think. So Plus that, it's, it's more fun. It's a little oh, bit totally. more formal to get the horse around. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like that's what you guys like doing. I like well, it. We, usually, yes. Like I, said, I mess with my wife all the time. So. Yes. Yeah. He, it's, it's awful. He's like, can we go now? Can we go now? Can we go now? Yeah. I'm like, I'm, 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 no, I'm not. I'm, I'm like, heck yeah, this can wait. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> You know, off like this, yeah. you gotta go have fun. You, you do know? exactly. Yeah. You do. You do. <laughs> wherever you are watching, wherever you are listing, please rate us there. We yeah, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. Mm -hmm.